guy. Bro, you gotta show the boys your new truck. This thing is like pretty much a new truck it now. It looks so good. Looks like a grandpa no more. Yeah, give them a little tour of what you got going so, on. Here. What we did to start out is we paint mask the front end because we don't want to look like a grandpa of all the chrome. I mean, so we paint mask front end, paint mask fender flares with the dumb amber lights gone on the fender flares. Then we did a four inch cognito lift of the Fox shocks and the big old boys. Hot boy, 24 by 14. Less tire on this truck than the FRS has got. I learned from the best. Little, what can I say? Little wee tires. I'm trying to blend in. <laughs> Dude, it looks so good though. It came out good. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm not the biggest fan of these trucks as you guys know, but this one kind of makes me want to get one now. See? I'm not going to lie. You should. I should do a white one now. You should. Just to Dude, keep white, it clean. Yeah. White is always clean. Hell yeah, that looks so sick. Thanks buddy, I appreciate it. Yes sir, well you want to save my life again? I suppose. Oh Lord. Bader has got a ring for us in stock. Don't mind my very full, non cleanly shop right now. Dude, too many damn cars is what it's looking like. How funny would that be if I put that car together and it just burned all the oil? Because it probably would. The tuner would get blamed. <laughs> As yeah. always. I got two packs, so. Well, I just need one oil ring. All right guys, we got the ring that we needed. Shout out to Bader for having that in stock and getting us back on track. So I need to go ahead. This is where we left off yesterday. Driver's side head is on. So we got to get the one single piston into cylinder number one. Let's be a little more careful this time and not destroy the ring. And then we can get this entire engine together, get all the timing stuff on, get the new clutch and flywheel on this thing and get her dropped into the car. So we now have a complete long block, almost ready to drop in. There's a few other things I'm gonna go ahead and install first, of course. Intake manifold is gonna go on with the wiring harness, exhaust manifold, a pipe turbo, and just a couple other little things. So let's go ahead and get this thing finished up, all buttoned up, ready to drop in. And we do have a new ACT clutch with an OEM STI flywheel that we are gonna install. Super excited for that. No more chattery six puck.
I remember when I installed this PL in my pipe kit, a lot of people were saying, don't use the gaskets they include. This gasket blew out on the dyno, like zero miles on it pretty much. So we have some new Grim Speed. Shout out to my boy Grim. Shout out to my guys at Grim Speed for making the highest quality gaskets. So we got some of those. Oh, that we need to go ahead and install. All right guys, this thing's pretty much ready to go in the car. We do need to slap the clutch on. This here is the HDSS, same clutch that's in that car, in the grade 10 and Jared's 10. We run this clutch on a lot of cars. It's amazing, it drives nice, and it's like five to $600. Pretty damn cheap for what you get. It does come with alignment tool, throat bearing, and the pilot bearing as well. As soon as we get this thing on, the motor is gonna go in the car, and that's as far as we're gonna get tonight. It's pretty freaking late right now and we will finish it up bright and early tomorrow. I do want to get it started up and hopefully driving in this video, well, it should be driving in this video. I don't see why it wouldn't. So I'll pick this video back up in the morning. Yeah, let's get this thing on. So the engine is back in the car. It took a little bit because we, being that this is a new, a different block, there ended up being a dowel. There's two dowels, right? That go from the engine to the trans. Um, there was one on the engine side and the trans side that I didn't catch right away. So I was fighting that. As soon as I figured it out, she slipped right in. So now we have just a couple things to install. We have a downpipe battery, AC compressor. We finally have a proper AC compressor for the car. Before there was an older gen one on there that was actually seized up. We have a radiator, alternator starter, intercooler piping intake, wastegate dump tube. We have new injectors as well that we are not installing on the car yet. Injectors on a sub is really, really easy to do. 
well, I guess injectors on pretty much any car are pretty easy to do. So we're gonna be breaking in this engine on the current 1100s. And then before it gets tuned, we're gonna jump to the 1500s. We already have the new DW440 fuel pump installed. So this whole fuel system out of this car is Bobby's old fuel system, which we know is good to 584 is what that car made. Now this little turbo ain't gonna make nowhere near 584, I don't think. If this thing even breaks 500, I'd be excited and impressed. So let's run a fatty time lapse, get the whole engine bay back together, add our fluids that we need to add, and we can go ahead and knock out the first start. So provided I built this engine correctly, this thing's ready to start up. Just got some fluids added. We did water instead of coolant or instead of antifreeze, just in case we have any leaks, it's much easier to deal with. Topped off on oil, crank positions unplugged, all the injectors are unplugged. I'm gonna pull the turbo feed line, that guy there, and crank it until we get some oil out of the turbo feed line. Reason for that is we want some oil moving around. We want oil going into the turbo immediately, and I also want to make sure we don't have any weird sounds just by turning it over. While she is ready to be fired up, there's some oil on the ground. I wonder if that's just from when we had that turbo feed off. Let me double check, see what that's all about real quick. It is the turbo feed line, but not from the top of the turbo. From where, let's see if we can get a good angle on this. Ooh, we can barely see it right there. Yeah, it's where the banjo bolt for the feed line bolts onto the head. So let me fix that real quick and we can fire it up. Oil leak is fixed and we are ready for the most, or the yeah, the most nerve wracking part of living life, firing up a brand new engine, especially by yourself when you have no one else to watch to see if you got any leaks going on. All right, I like to fire it up. Let her run for like five seconds and kill it right away. Just to make sure we don't have any leaks. If I had someone else here, of course I wouldn't do that, but we didn't have any leaks. Man, oh man, that is a good feeling. She got up to operating temp just fine. We did a few revs, that's how I like to break it in a little bit. I'm gonna let it cool down all the way, check all the fluids. We gotta get some goodies on over there, just so our rod ain't flopping around. And then we can go on first drive. I'm gonna put about 50 miles on it, come back to the shop, probably not today, maybe to, maybe tomorrow, I need to go edit this video. So I'm gonna drive home, about 50 miles on this thing, and then we can cut the filter, change the oil, Make sure we got nothing crazy looking in the filter. And then I'll probably slap a couple hundred miles on it over the next few days. And she's ready for her newest moon tune. I'm excited. Pull it up 
in the air real quick, make sure we don't have no leak, make sure we don't have any leaks whatsoever. And then we, and then we can go on a drive. That clutch is actually gonna make me wanna drive this car. We had a six puck in it before, as you guys know. It was very, very chattery. It was not enjoyable to drive whatsoever. So we went to that full face ACT. I just drove it from here out of the shop, in the shop to out of the shop. It's amazing. Let's go on a cruise. I'm not gonna lie, it feels really weird having this car like done done. There's only two things left to fix on this thing. As of right now, our fuel level gauge is not working, and we put that DW, the 440 LPH in this thing to go along with the 1500s that we're gonna put in later. Um, I must have not plugged something in because it's also throwing a check engine light for the fuel temp sensor. We have that issue, and then we have an airbag light, which the airbag light's always been on in this thing. We'll tackle that later on. But there's no weird radiator fan issues we have to fix. There's no clutch issues we have to fix. There's no issues at all. As of right now, I'm, I might be speaking too soon because we are up to 0.1 miles on this thing. But yeah, it feels good. It feels really, really good to finally have this thing back on the road. And that was a very quick turnaround, I must say. We blew it up about a week and a half ago. And thankfully, Josh Bader has every part in the world in stock and we were able to get a ton of parts from him for this build. So uh, I can thank Bader enough for helping out. And of course, you already know, he's gonna be doing the moon tune on this thing. just so people aren't misled on the dyno video of this car that video got a ton of views and there was quite a few comments that are in my opinion and in my experience misleading yeah the car probably could add more miles on it but doing a break-in period on a car is not going to help you or is not going to save you from cracking a sleeve on the dyno and if you think that you should probably do a little bit of research before commenting those commenting those things because i feel like a lot of people are getting misled uh, with those types of comments because it's simply not true. The only thing you do during break-in is you're seating the rings. If we had a compression issue on the dyno where we had cylinders that were low, low on compression, I could see that. Um, but cracking a sleeve on the dyno has nothing to do with break-in. There's plenty of shops out there that build a brand new motor, put it in the car, we'll run it for a little bit, pull the filter, cut it, make sure you don't got no bullshit in the filter, and then send it to the moon. So, I mean, this time we're gonna have more miles on it, not because of the YouTube comments, just because we can't get tuned right now. So we'll probably have like 500 miles to a thousand miles on it this time, but that's not gonna save us from cracking your sleeve. Just so you guys know, I wanna make that clear.
What do you think? This car's fun. You like it? Yeah, I like it a lot. She's gonna be a ripper when she's all done. <clears throat> kind of nice to drive though, huh? It is really nice. It's super like just chill and relaxing. Yeah, it's not super loud and aggressive like yours. What? It sounded like this was open. Oh. There's no back seat in it, so you, all you hear is the fuel pump. Yeah. Uh, your car is kind of fast. It's so fast. Did it look fast when I ripped yeah. it? Yeah. It hurt my neck. All right, friends, I'm going to wrap this video up here. If you want to pick up this beautiful clutch, I'll link it down below. What else did we put on the car today? I guess we built a whole ass motor. Honey, I was not there. I'm going to link the whole, all the parts for the entire build, the engine build. I'm just going to, I'll put the parts list of everything down below. And I must say, she looks pretty, pretty gangster driving down the way. Huh, Bobby? Yeah. Except for that license plate light that's flopping around. Should probably yes. fix that. Just hideous. Just hideous. Okay, thanks for driving my car. You're welcome. Goodbye. Goodbye, boss.